Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now y'all can do better than that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> He's worthy of all the praise. He truly is. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. The ruler, the creator, the sustainer of all. He's worthy. No one more worthy than the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm, I'm mentioned to preach, but uh, let me just introduce. Um, yeah, praise God for today, for this Sunday. Um, as we're approaching just the Christmas, um, we're in the Christmas season, um, but we're approaching Christmas, which is a time for all believers to rejoice over the foundation, the good news, the reason for the season. Yeah. The reason we have joy and, and hope is this um, baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Um, and so uh, I have an awesome message um, that God has just been um, working some things in me, some kinks out and showing me what the, the true meaning of Christmas is. Um, something that as Christians, we should never get tired of hearing. If we're getting tired of hearing it, then we're not hearing the right thing. We must be hearing something wrong because when we hear this, every time we hear it, it's cause to shout for joy as we think about the reason for our salvation. And so let us first pray and then we'll get into this message. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this morning. Thank you for bringing us here together to uh, once again, praise you and worship you and to hear your word and to be reminded of the good news that is um, our plan of salvation, the coming of our Redeemer. Lord, let us not get tired of hearing this gospel, but God, let it revive our hearts every time we hear it, Father God. Lord, let us walk with hope, Lord, that no matter what happens in our lives, that we have an anchor, that we have an announcement, that we have good news, Lord God, that has stirred up our souls. And Father, we want to go and tell it on the mountain. Wherever we go, Lord, we want to share this good news, God, to those who are in darkness, Father. There is a light that has come into the world in a humble, lowly, meek and mild way lord god let us come and um let us go back two thousand years ago and and look at this quiet peaceful night father let our hearts be stirred and and moved and convicted at the sight of uh, the sight of jesus our lord and savior lying in a feeding trough lord let our hearts be convicted father god Lord, I pray that you would turn us from all the things that this culture has made Christmas to be um, presents, to be parties, to be Santa and jingle bells. God, remind us and bring us back to the reason, Father, that we celebrate Christmas. And God, we just thank you, Lord. And so, Father, I pray that you would um, speak to our hearts this morning, God. Let your word go forth, God. Lord, let me decrease so that you, your spirit, would increase, Father, that we'd, we would hear your words. And Lord, let the words transform us from the inside out, Father God. God, we need you. We're so desperate for you, Lord. God, you're so precious to us, God. Lord, let us come and adore on bended knee, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, there's no one greater. There is no one greater but then the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. The reason why we celebrate, the reason why we have come together this morning. Not to feel good religiously or morally or feel, feel like we're checking off a checklist, God. But Lord, let us truly embrace the, the, the Savior who has brought us out from darkness to this marvelous light where we can all come and worship authentically. Not putting on a show, but authentically worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And so, God, I pray that you would be with us this morning. Father, I pray that you would open eyes that are blind. I pray that you would open ears that are deaf, Father God. Lord, let the glorious gospel go forth. The simple gospel. Let it revive hearts, Father God. Let it bring comfort to those who are maybe feeling stress and anxiety in this season, Lord God. Lord, let it give hope to those who are hopeless, Father Lord, those who are just so tired of all the ups and downs, turns and lefts and rights this world brings, Lord, let it provide them an anchor. Let it provide them peace, Lord God, as you are as you are offering it this morning, as we think about the reason for our rejoicing, Christ coming into the world. And so Lord, we thank you for today. Have your way in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, let me turn your attention to uh, Luke 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 20. And it reads like this. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them And the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger or a feeding trough. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. You may be seated. (laughs) My message today is very simple. Jesus came. Two women who were having lunch in an elegant hotel were approached by a mutual friend who asked the occasion for the meal. One lady replied, oh, we're celebrating the birth of my baby boy. But where is he? Inquired the friend. Oh, said the mother, you didn't think I'd bring him, did did you? What a picture this is of the way we treat Jesus Christ on the day of Christmas. 
As Christmas is quickly approaching and gifts are being purchased, parties are being planned, and families are traveling back home, I want to go back 2,000 years ago on that quiet and peaceful night. The story of Jesus' birth has been told time and time again, and we are sometimes tempted to tune out and claim, oh, we already know about all that. Yet the good news of a savior is always breaking, is always breaking. As there are and still are those who do not believe and have never heard. But for those of us who have heard and rejoice in this good news, like Dane Ortland says in his book, The Deeper, let the gospel or the gospel is not just the ignition of the Christian life. But it is the engine by which we are being sanctified and renewed day by day. So let us again listen to this story and let our hearts be quickened and, and made alive and on fire as we see the reason why we as Christians get to rejoice, which is this tiny little helpless babe lying in a feeding trough. Mm. This night, the Lord of all glory entered into his creation so let us look today at his coming let us look at how he came let us look at the nature of how he came and of course the reason why he came so firstly is that he came sovereignly okay so the beginning verse in chapter two of luke's gospel notes in the decree a when a uh, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. But before we get into this text, I just want to point out that these that they're making mention. Luke is making mention of real historical people. Amen. OK, um, Caesar Augustus and Quirinius, the governor of Syria. It's the same way we turn on the news and hear about the actions of our president, Joe Biden. And Governor Greg Abbott. And we know that these are real life people making real world decisions. This is unlike many of the Greek stories of their gods or fiction tales that start with the words once upon a time. This is a real historical account of a day that happened in real world history. So therefore, we can't just brush this aside as when, as we do with all the tales and myths and legends we have to really wrestle with this as it is a real historical event yes. so let us get into it by the by the time this decree was made by caesar mary was ready to give birth mm -hmm. this is this is important to note because in the old testament it was prophesied by Micah that a savior, a ruler of Israel was to be born in Bethlehem. So this decree that a census was to be taken and that every man should be registered in their hometown caused Joseph and Mary, who were residents, not of Bethlehem, but of Nazareth, to travel then to Bethlehem. So we see Caesar making an earthly decree. However, God is making a divine decree so that his word may come to pass. It is said by Solomon in Proverbs 21 verse 1 that the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wills. How God could have used a numerous, multiple ways to get Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem so this prophecy would be fulfilled. And almost as if to show off his great power, he uses Caesar Augustus, who was the king of the all powerful Rome, to make a decree to get them to come down to Bethlehem. The coming of Christ, it was established. And it was planned before eternity and fulfilled using the free will of man. How amazing it is that God can use and accomplish his plan through our free will. But then again, he is God. 
God is sovereign. Therefore, amen, God is sovereign. Therefore, we can be confident that no matter what comes in our life, in our way, that God is using, as it says in Romans 8, 28, all things for our good. They're all working together. So don't get caught off guard when something happens that you weren't planning on or you weren't expecting because God knew it before time even began. And not just he knew it, but he's using it to accomplish his purpose, to sanctify us in the truth, to make us look more and more like Christ each and every day. He's sovereign. It has been said history is simply his story. All the things we see, we read about in history books, he's using all that to accomplish his purpose. Not taken a uh, surprise or taken aback by the actions of you or me, but knowing that they would happen, he's still using all that. Amen. But let me also draw your attention to the name Bethlehem, which was the birth city of our Lord. Amen. Bethlehem simply means house of bread. Right. Now, why is that significant? Well, it's an ideal name for the birthplace of the bread of life himself as Jesus claimed to be. He said, I am the bread of life. You are coming to seek me for, for bread that perishes, but come to seek me for true bread that will give you eternal life. We see even in the Old Testament where Moses, um, where God drew down bread, manna from heaven, and yet they ate that bread and they died. Jesus is saying, come to me and whoever eats my flesh, yes, yes. the true bread will never die, but will live for eternity. Amen. And so here in the house of bread, the bread of life is born. Yes. Mm. How amazing is the way Christ, the eternal God, entered into time and space. At the right time did he come. Not a second earlier, not one later. And it's at that point that as we Christians, we look back at every year, but not just every year, all throughout the year, we look back at this day, the day that Christ came into the world. So he is sovereign. But next, I want to look at how he came humbly. As Joseph and Mary enter in Bethlehem, they begin looking for a place to stay and could not find a place with vacancy. So instead, they nestle into this um, stable, which possibly could have been a, a cave back in those times, and place the Lord Jesus Christ in a feeding trough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A stinky, filthy, messy feeding trough, the Lord of all glory. I mean, was this really how the God of all creation would enter in this world? Yes. The answer is yes. But first, let us be reminded that there is no mansion, there is no castle, there is no temple that he could come in that could compare with his heavenly dwelling place. Simply coming to earth from heaven was a condescension. It was him stepping down. There was no place suitable that would be compared to where he stood in eternity with the father in heaven. I mean, but still, I mean, a, a crib maybe or a cradle or a bed made with the most elegant fabrics. I mean, that would make more sense than a manger to us, at least. But he came humbly. He came lowly. And he made himself of nothing. In the world during this time, there lived two kings. One who ruled the most powerful nation whose governance spread wide, which was Rome. Caesar Augustus, who was the great nephew of Julius Caesar. I mean, no doubt during that night, he slept in a royal bed made from the most expensive fabrics from all around the world. At his command were many servants hired and chosen 
to meet any of his needs. The other king is ruler, creator, and sustainer of the heavens and earth. Yet lowly did he lay as helpless babe inside a feeding trough. But we see in Paul's uh, letter to the Corinthians in the 8th chapter in the ninth verse, he says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. Jesus, he gave the greatest example of humility mm -hmm. as he was pleased to be lowered all the way to the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. The theologian John Nelson Darby um, expresses it nicely when he says he began in a manger and he ended on the cross yeah. and all along the way he had nowhere to lay his head. This was Jesus, not coming to be praised by men, not coming to live in a, a castle, or, but to die, to be a servant, to serve, to wash the feet of his own created beings. This was Jesus, humbly. I mean, just... Humility is, is demonstrated by God, but it also is something that pleases him. I mean, notice the way, notice to whom he chose to reveal himself to that night. Was it the religious priests? No. Was it the Pharisees with all their scripture and Old Testament memorized? No. But it was humble shepherds tending to their flock. It was average and ordinary people yeah. who we would look past. Yeah. And yet it was these whom he chose to put on heaven's show for them to reveal that Jesus Christ was coming into the world. Yeah. He loves humility so much. In Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. See, if, if, if he would have revealed himself to these Pharisees, they would have came and, and looked at this babe lying in a feeding trough and laughed and scoffed and this is our savior? And walked off mad and frustrated and felt lied to. But he came to humble shepherds he loves humility. Yes, yes. It is God who makes himself manifest to those we consider as weak and, and foolish. Yeah. Ourselves who have come short of God's glory. Yeah. And yet he's revealed himself yeah. to us. Yeah. By no means of our own doing. Simply demonstrating his love for us. Yeah. Let us pray that, that God and his grace would reveal himself to our hearts so that we may join in with the angels singing glory to God yeah. in the highest. Yeah. Let the gospel, let this um, babe lying in a manger be more real to us so that we can look to God and say, Lord, thank you. Yeah. Our means of salvation. Mm -hmm. He came simply to die, yeah. which goes on to my last point, is that he came purposefully. Right. So we've looked at how Christ came and he, by a sovereign decree, not of Caesar Augustus, but God in eternity past. Mm -hmm. We've seen in what nature he's come. It, he came lowly, yeah. meek and mild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, if we stopped here, we there are rejoicing. That's not the heart of rejoicing for the Christian. Yeah, yeah. 
But when we look at the why of why he came, we begin instantly praising God because we know of what reason he came. Hmm. It is when we look at why he came that we begin praising him. Let's look at the angel's words that night after telling the shepherds to fear not. And why were they in fear? Well, only because the glory of the Lord shone around them. There's no man who just stands in the glory of God uh, straight standing up. But in fear. There's nothing compared to God's glory yeah. because with God's glory, we, we see how sinful we are. Yeah. As even Isaiah pointed out, oh, I've, I've been undone yeah. standing where I should not stand yeah. in the presence of a holy God. I'm, I'm almost seen. I am seen as naked with all my sin just exposed yeah. and before his presence. Yeah. And yet they say, fear not. And they say, behold, I bring you advice. They say, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, a savior who is Christ the Lord. This baby just born in the world is the seed Eve was promised to by God in Genesis that would crush the serpent's head. Yes. This baby just born in the world would be the suffering servant prophesied yes. by Isaiah who would be slain like an innocent lamb yes. for his own people. Yes. It was this baby who came into the world to free the captives. Yes. From their bondage. Yes. Thank you. This Christmas, don't miss that message. Yeah. On the contrary, it is not about peace. It's not about simply just peace. Come on, come on. It's not lay down your weapons, yeah. armies, and just come together in peace. That's not the meaning of, of Christmas. Yeah. But it's good news. That Jesus Christ, the Savior, came into the world to give his life as an offering that would once and for all fulfill God's righteous requirement from the law yeah. and satisfy completely his judgment on sin. Amen. See, this gospel, meaning good news, it's not moral, it's not advice to the well-to-do person. Who would like to be better morally. Amen. It is not for those who just want to add a little religion to their life. Amen. The gospel, it's news yeah. about something that has happened. Yeah. It's news that a savior has been born to us. He came to die. To save us from our sin. Yes. He raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. And is now pouring his spirit on every man. That would believe in him. Yes. This is why he came. Yes. In light of this. Knowing the reason why he came. We can therefore praise. And we can appreciate in the manner in which he came. Yes. That he came right on time. Yes. We can praise him now that he came in such a humble way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost makes it just better knowing the reason why he came. Yeah. It wasn't just he came to save sinners, but he did it in such a way that is only left for us to just praise him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus humbling himself by coming down in flesh, yeah. living as a servant mm -hmm. and dying a criminal's death on a cross so that we may live. So let us end with that heavenly praise from on high, which 
the angels with heavenly hosts saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. While the shepherds were still unsure what this heavenly announcement could be about, the angels burst into just excitement and yeah. praise. They couldn't hold it in no longer. Yeah. The Jesus finally came. They just erupted in praise, shouting in praise to God who was filled with love and filled with compassion and filled with grace. Yeah. That he was fulfilling and has fulfilled his eternal plan yeah. of redemption that he created in eternity past. So this morning, in closing, this day, this Christmas season, mm -hmm. receive, not earn, but receive yeah. Yeah. the greatest free gift there is. Yeah. If you find yourself on December 25th with no present in your hand, just know that has been given to you. Yeah. A greater gift yeah. and an ultimate yeah. gift yeah. to you, the yeah. sinner, yeah. from Jesus Christ, yeah. the Savior. Yeah. Simply receive. Yes. Don't add nothing, just receive. Yeah. Nothing in my hands I bring. Yeah. Simply to the cross I cling. Yeah. He's not asking for your good works. Yeah. He's asking that you put your faith in his son and the yeah. works that he did on the cross yeah. 2,000 years ago. Yeah. If the peace you have from things in this world has not satisfied yeah. your sin-sick soul, yeah. then look by faith yeah. at the cross when your debt has been paid finally and in full. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't put it off till another day. Yeah. For tomorrow is not promised. Yeah. Seek him while he may be found. Yeah. For truly today yeah. is the day of salvation. Yeah. Come and adore him on bended knee. Yeah. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is worthy of all the praise. Yeah. All the praise is due him. For he has done a, a mighty thing. Yeah. He has brought redemption to those who are far off. Yeah. He brought reconciliation to those who were sinful. Yeah. Yeah. I pray this. Be your testimony as it is of all his saints. Enslaved to sin were we. Blind as ever could be. Till Christ came with key. Which was death on a cross for me. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. God, as we're hearing this message, as we're hearing this story, as we've heard it so many times before, Father, I pray that this season, it would meditate, Father God, that deeper realizations of what this means, this babe, this helpless babe lying in a manger, what it means for our eternity, God, that it's secure, Lord God, that as we have put our faith in Jesus Christ, Lord, we have salvation, God. God, we have reconciliation. Lord, sinful man has now been washed clean by the blood of Christ and now can boldly enter into your throne because of our great mediator, Jesus Christ. Lord, let us let us take away that we have been given good news, Lord God. Let us not hold it in. But Father, wherever we go, high and low, Lord, let us preach let us herald, let us shout yeah. this gospel as there are still those who don't know you, Father. Yeah. Right. There are those who are enwrapped with the, what culture says Christmas is all about. And they find themselves surrounded by family, being given all these amazing gifts. And yet there is this hole, yet there is this this. Vanity that they feel deep in their hearts. 
because it is the gospel that brings life to those who are dead. It's not just that we're missing this one thing. We were dead before Christ, but we were made alive by his death. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for the words that we've heard, God. Lord, let us come and bring you shouts of joy this Christmas, God. Lord, let all the other things just be, let us be cherries on, on the cake, Father God. Just adding the icing, Father, as we know the whole, our, our eternal hope is that Jesus Christ came yeah. to save sinners. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you. Have your way. Please. It's in your darling son, Jesus' name, that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.